Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, I ha I'm having a little bit of a hard time even going through this. This is not going to be a very long video, so I promise you this is not going to be like an ongoing discussion or thoughts and stuff like that. I just wanted to give you guys a brief update. Um, I have have taken a few days of, I would say... Um, thinking and um, and pretty much processing my feelings. Um, I had done an EEG appointment last week. To a lot of you might know, you know, I've had issues in Indiana and. Um, and I had my neurology appointment. And um, so my neurologist felt like I needed to go through some exams. So I went my first exam. And I will, I will do is I will, you know, put in a series of um, playlists and stuff like that on the, on the top part of the, the bar. Um... I'm kind of like really having a hard time even bringing this up, but um, it took me a few days and I gotten the results of my EEG. I haven't spoken to my doctor yet because I know she's waiting for me to go through the other evaluations before she sees me and decides to tell me, okay, well, this is what we're dealing with and stuff like that and what's going to be the game plan. So I know the method that she's going through. So I haven't reached out to her, but I did receive the report of that EEG. And unfortunately, it came abnormal. Now, I was hoping that it would come out normal. I was hoping that it was just something very minor. And um, once I received that report and I read through it and, you know, I, I'm a nerd. I'm a big nerd when I see anything, um, when it comes scientific and stuff like that. I like to do research and read about things like that because it gives me an idea of what I'm exactly going to be walking into. You know, I don't like going into a situation with a blind eye. You know, I like to educate myself and, and be realistic of what I'm going to go through. So on the report and I'm going to read a little bit of what the report says. So on the report it says focal slow activity over the bitemporal region. Um this is a finding consistent with a focal disturbance in the cerebral function and underlying structural lesions should be considered. So I guess they're thinking maybe there might be some other issues in the brain that might be causing you know the the slowness of the waves in my brain you know the activity in my brain and so you know it was like a kick in the gut for me because it took me a very long time to try to process this the my feelings on this because of the fact that I have been going through a lot in my life and by seeing this report and reading up on what they mean by this it's putting me to a point that I'm not getting severely depressed but it does sadden me because um, a lot of you might not know, in 2012, I was fighting for my life. And this is what I was feeling now. It's just like I, it brought me back to the feelings that I was going through in 2012. At that time, I was going through, um, I was, it was like about six months after my mom passed away. And I didn't really get the chance to mourn my mother and to go through um, a physical ailment to the point that 
I had hospitalizations for transfusion. I had numerous um, shots in my body to try to control because I was hemorrhaging. I was hemorrhaging and um, finding the right doctors and trying to get help for my hemorrhaging problems. And all I could think about is the struggle that I went through that year. And it was a whole year that I went through that struggle. And to try to think of, I need to survive. I need to be around for my children. And praying every night. Because I felt like my life was being taken away from me. And I was constantly praying. Because a lot of you, you know, might not believe in prayer, but I do. You know, I am very spiritual in that way. And um, it just, you know, thinking about those times of me trying to survive, to try to live. Because I wanted to be around for my children. I f and by hearing this and reading this report, it's putting me back into that same mode of I got to survive again. It's putting me into that mode that I, I can't let this um, this issue take over me and, and, you know, I need to be around for my kids and it, yes, it, I'm scared right now. I'm scared because this is just a scratch on the surface because, you know, I don't know what else is going on in my body and it's going to be quite some time before I see my doctor and have a sit down with her. But the thing is that I do have to stay um, focused and that I have to stick around for my children and I need to fight. And now I have to be in fighter mode again and try to, to fight this, whatever this is, so I could be around for my kids. So it's just, you know, I did a lot of crying. I did a lot of crying, a lot of... um reflection and try to stay positive because I can't I can't let this this problem my new problem take me down you know I'm sorry it, it seems so all over the place with this video but this is how I'm feeling I'm feeling all over the place <laughs> you know I feel like like, I can't believe I'm going through this. And I really need to stick around. I can't, I can't let any, any issue, and not even from COVID, take me. Take me from my family. And I'm praying each night that I could get through this, you know, that I hope it's something minor and not something more serious. So I'm just at this point right now. So I, um, right now all I can do is wait for my next appointment, which is coming up in May and go for my two tests because I'm supposed to go for an MR, MRI and MRA. So it's going to be both test the same day so I have to be there like 2 30 in the afternoon and I won't leave the hospital until probably five o'clock because the way they're running those tests it's going to be you know 45 minutes for each section of what they're going to do so it's going to be a long day for me so um I'm sorry it seems all over the place with this video all I just, I just needed just to bring out what's bugging me and how I'm feeling at this moment. Um, I will definitely keep you guys, you know, up to date on what's going on. Um, if you're new to the channel, you're welcome to subscribe. And um, please give the video a like so then um, other people that are have UCTD or, you know, are having symptoms of covid and see my story that they could see what I'm going through right now. So then they could get an idea what could happen because everybody will have different stories regarding COVID. 
but I feel that it's definitely important to share the story because this is what's the reality after COVID, you know? So, um, I hope to see you guys soon in my next video. Bye.